dedication and loyalty to the Trump family, is that something you recognize as somebody who was also in that cult before? Absolutely. Is there, is there hope for our man Tony here? Uh, very little, I think, until he hits a brick wall. And in your experience, on a scale of 1 to 10, how eager was the Trump campaign and your interactions to manufacture dirt on Joe Biden? 1 to 10, 10 being the highest. 10 plus. 10 plus. Would it surprise you, Mr. Parnas, that the Russians and in their disinformation campaign outlets have often cited Chairman Comer's uh, testimony and allegations against the Biden family to make their own allegations against Joe Biden? No, it doesn't surprise me because that's exactly what they want to happen. Mr. Chairman, it's over. It's over. It's time to pack it up. And I want to give you the top 10 reasons why impeachment is dead. Number 10, your key witness today is testifying from the slammer. Number nine, key evidence of a bribe that you all relied on. The guy who said that has been indicted for lying about that bribe and he's a Russian asset. Number eight, another key witness has been indicted as a Chinese agent. Number seven, during the Hunter Biden interview, Mr. Chairman, you didn't even stay for the whole time. Number six, Chairman Jason Smith didn't show up at all to the Hunter Biden interview. The same day, number five, Daryl Issa said, it's a big nothing. Number four, today Jim Jordan began his remarks not by relying on any evidence for this investigation, but he went off attacking the DOJ about what they're doing with the Catholics. Number three, you all still have not sent the articles of impeachment for the Mayorkas impeachment to the Senate. And that happened last month. Number two, you're now talking about a criminal referral, but if you had evidence for a criminal referral, then you have evidence to impeach somebody for high crimes and misdemeanors. And number one, and I'm sorry to say this, Fox News isn't even carrying this today. In fact, one of their anchors, as they broke away 10 minutes in, said, this is the same hearing over and over and over. At what point are you going to fish or cut bait? So I just have to tell you, it's over. Impeachment's over. Dunzo. Bye-bye. Rigor mortis. Lights out. Curtain drop. Mic drop. Peace. Adios. Sayonara. Au revoir, or a language that you all understand, doi siv danya. Did I say that right, Mr. Parnas? Yes. <laughs> I dare you to impeach, but you won't because you don't have the evidence. And because you don't have the evidence, you don't have the votes. Guys, it's dead. And so I'm here to pronounce the time of death. Five sixteen. Say it in Chinese. Impeachment is dead. Five sixteen. Biden impeachment's dead. Joe Biden has been acquitted. Gentlemen, time's expired. Chair now recognizes Miss Luna from Florida for five minutes. Mr. Parnas, I want to read to you a few quotes from a letter that you wrote to the House Oversight Committee. First, you said that I will remind you that Solchewski's answers are in the report that the House Oversight Committee published. In this document, he stated that Hunter Biden was never asked or assigned to speak with anyone in the U.S. on behalf of Burisma. Mr. Parnas, are you aware that according to Amos uh, Hochstein, a U.S. Senate, our U.S. State Department official, in a transcribed interview with the Senate, Hunter Biden requested to have a meeting with him in November of 2015. Mr. Hochstein testified that he met with Hunter Biden and they spoke about Burisma. So yes or no, that statement that you made to House Oversight was incorrect. The statement was correct because that statement. Yes or no. The statement is coming so are you from the yes words it was? of CEO Burisma. It's directly conf conflicting with answers. testimony. Not, Next question. Rep, that was not there my were no answers. political or lobbying firm efforts Burisma. on behalf of Burisma in your statement that you made to House Oversight. Mr. Parnas, are you aware that Burisma's engagement of Blue Star Strategies, which was a lobbying firm that was a lobbying the U.S. government on behalf of Burisma and Mikola Slocheski, and according to Sally Painter and Karen Termitano, the heads of Burisma. So that statement, again, that you wrote to this committee was incorrect, yes or no? no. No, you're incorrect because no, I said no. No, that is incorrect. No, the, you're directly no, conflicting no, with that. No, My final no, question the, for you, no, Mr. Parnas, is by, next year that me, nobody from CEO the company Burisma. of Burisma Burisma has ever spoken to Joe Biden. It's okay, Chairman. I got him. Mr. Parnas, <laughs> Devin Archer testified to this committee that Vadim Pacharsky, the 
corporate secretary of Burisma, sat down for dinner with Joe Biden. So that statement also was incorrect that you wrote to this committee, yes or no? No, it's not incorrect. Mr. Because Chairman, I think this witness's credibility is shot. I'd like to, I'd like to <laughs> give the remaining of my time to the amazing chair, uh, representative from Florida, Representative Matt Gates. Very good. The Democrats could have sent anyone. They could have sent Hunter Biden. They could have sent Joe Biden. They could have sent Rob Walker. They could have sent Devin Archer. The Democrats could have sought any person to come and refute the direct evidence backed up by bank statements, backed up by calendar entries, backed up by emails, backed up by text messages. And who did the Democrats send to clear the name of Joe and Hunter Biden? They sent Lev Parnas. Lev Parnas, who was charged with enough crimes and violating our campaign finance laws to, like, serve 50 years, but he gets four months. And, and like, the, the, the big, like, grand criminal conspiracy Mr. Parnas is involved in is using Russian oligarch money to try to get marijuana licenses, which seems odd, and then using that Russian money to plow into campaigns in order to achieve that objective. But the fraud he committed wasn't just on our election system by plowing Russian money, it was also a fraud on his own investors who didn't get it. So I guess, Mr. Bobulinski, as you hear uh, Maxwell Frost, my colleague on the Democrat side, say that Mr. Parnas, fresh off of his prison time, is the most credible witness we've had to address these business dealings. What's your reaction to that? I think it's laughable that uh, the Democrats are asking Lev Parnas to weigh in on my credibility, a convicted felon that served jail time. I have an impeccable record. Now, he warned me earlier in this hearing that they're coming for me. I look no, forward I didn't worry. to that. I said just keep talking. I, You'll I look, be there soon. I look forward to that, Mr. Parnas. Keep lying. You'll be there soon. Well, and, and is that, when it, is that a threat, yeah, Mr. Parnas? No, it's just the truth. If no, did you, you say they I were coming that. for me? No, I said if you keep lying, you will end up in prison. I'm not lying. You're well, the one who was you're lying. Not, you have nothing to say. You're the one who went to prison for lying. What am I lying. lying for? Tell me what we're lying for, Mr. Baberensky. What? You don't even know what you're talking about. What am I lying? You went to what prison lying, for lying and defrauding no, your what investors. What am I lying here? What am I lying here? Oh, the list is so long. We don't have enough time. I think Mr. Gates only has a minute. I think you're a little scared, just like Mr. Gates. So one crime. Because Mr. Gates doesn't even ask a question. You're filibustering. I've been for six then hours. it was Raiders home, then it was a special counsel, then it was the 14th Amendment. The party of democracy said, we're going to keep the guy off the ballot who's leading in every single poll. The ranking member said that President Trump should be disqualified from even running for office. Thank goodness we have a Supreme Court who disagreed with the ranking member and the Democrats. Nine to zero. Not 5-4, not 6-3, not 7-2, not 8-1, 9 to 0 they disagreed. Now Democrats say, how dare, how dare Republicans investigate Joe Biden? How dare they look into the money, the business, and the brand? Millions of dollars, as the chairman said, millions of dollars from foreign entities run through 20 different companies for what? Wasn't, I mean... 20 different companies for what? Devin Archer told us what it was for. Access to the brand. And the brand was Joe Biden. The brand that played rounds of golf, took calls and meetings, attended lunches and dinners with Hunter Biden and his business partners. The brand that said, the brand that conditioned $1, million, $1 billion of American tax money on the firing of the prosecutor pressuring the company Hunter Biden sat on the board of. And oh, by the way, was getting paid a million bucks a year. Today, we're going to learn more about that brand. We're going to learn more about what Mr. Galanis called the Biden lift. We'll learn about the plausible deniability that Jim Biden talked to Mr. Bobolinsky about. And we'll hear about the statement, the rule that governed how the business operated around Joe Biden. The rule that said, say it, forget it, write it, regret it. So I want to thank our witnesses for coming here today. They like the whistleblowers who came to the Ways and Means Committee, are doing it simply because they want the American people to have the truth. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Chair now recognizes the ranking member for 12 minutes for his opening statement. Mr. Chairman, thank you very kindly. Um, with any luck, today marks the end of perhaps the most spectacular failure in the history of congressional investigations the effort to find a high crime or misdemeanor committed by Joe Biden and then to impeach him for it. 
In prior hilarious episodes of this long-running Madcap series, America got to see the following. One, nearly 20 fact witnesses who could not identify a single act of wrongdoing by President Biden, much less a high crime and misdemeanor, and who overwhelmingly testified that Biden was not involved in any of his family's business adventures. Two, three expert witnesses called by the majority itself who said nothing that they had seen in the tens of thousands of pages of documents uh, adduced by the majority even remotely approached the level of a high crime and misdemeanor. Bank records would show exactly what all the witnesses told us, that Joe Biden was not involved in his family members' businesses. Repeated voyeuristic displays of pornographic images by the majority completely irrelevant to any conceivable legislative or investigative purpose. A star witness, Gao Luft, who turned out to be a Chinese agent and an illegal arms trafficker on the run from American justice. And the key piece of evidence, which launched the entire zany goose chase, an FD-1023 form in which the FBI duly recorded a completely fictional tip about a $5 million bribe to Vice President Biden peddled by Alex Smirnoff, who has been criminally indicted by a Trump-appointed U.S. attorney, Special Counsel David Weiss, for felony counts of systematically lying to the FBI in constructing a false record about Joe Biden and now sits in jail in California as a flight risk while the world studies his long-standing and extensive ties to Russian intelligence. Today, the good chairman and his ace MAGA detectives have finally jumped the shark. The comedy of errors comes crashing to an end as House Republicans in more than a dozen Biden districts beg for mercy and the committee throws a flabby Hail Mary pass three weeks after the Super Bowl's over. So today, we revisit the fruitless testimony of two more fading star witnesses who have failed to testify to any presidential wrongdoing, much less evidence of high crimes and misdemeanors. Both of the majority witnesses are frustrated would-be business partners of Hunter Biden, who tried to leverage the Biden name, or the Biden brand, as they keep calling it. But they never got any business off the ground for reasons that will become painfully obvious to anyone watching the proceedings today. Even Hunter Biden, laboring at the time under a serious substance abuse addiction, could tell these were not the type of people he should be doing business with. So rather than representing the Biden brand, which was their ardent wish, they now show up today as loyal servants of Trump world, each of them proudly represented by their very own former Trump White House attorney. The first is Mr. Bobolinsky, the bitterly disappointed wannabe hunter business partner whose famously litigious history includes unsuccessfully suing his own dying father's charity for nearly a million dollars. And just last month, suing Cassidy Hutchinson for $10 million after she reported that Mr. Bobolinsky wearing a ski mask met with Mark Meadows, which Ms. Hutchison is now backed up with actual documentary photographic evidence, something in very short supply in this investigation. Mr. Bobolinsky made his hazy allegations against the Bidens public for the first time at a press conference choreographed by the Trump for President campaign, which provided him a venue, a gaggle of journalists, and even a dress shirt that they went out and bought for him uh, to wear to the event. Hours later, Mr. Bobolinsky joined the second 2020 presidential debate as Donald Trump's personal guest, where he was seated with Kid Rock and Mark Meadows. The other star witness, Mr. Galanis, who I believe is appearing by Zoom today, is a serial fraudster and convicted con man, a term I would charitably not use on a witness, except it was explicitly bestowed upon him by not one, but two different U.S. federal district court judges, including the one who sentenced him to over 15 years in prison for defrauding union pension funds, a Native American tribe, and scores of innocent investors. Mr. Galanis was sentenced to pay restitution of over $80 million to his victims. That's a lot of money. That's what Donald Trump was sentenced to pay uh, E. Jean Carroll for in that civil litigation. The very first record of Mr. Galanis' claims against the Biden family 
appeared, check this out, in the clemency petition that he sent from prison to President Trump. Um, but the key point is this. Even if we were to believe every single word offered by these utterly compromised and biased witnesses, Mr. Bobolinsky, Mr. Galanis, their allegations don't identify any wrongdoing, much less an impeachable offense by President Biden. With the impeachment bus running on empty, our GEO colleagues now are apparently preparing to save face by ending the impeachment farce with criminal referrals. But criminal referrals require evidence of crimes. And the only crimes we have seen are those of the GOP's own star witnesses like Russian asset Alex Smirnoff, Chinese agent Gal Luft, Devin Archer, and Jason Galanis. The minority witness today, our witness, Lev Parnas, casts a piercing light on what's really taking place here. And Mr. Parnas has reason to know. He too used to be a mega sycophant peddling lies and disinformation to smear Joe Biden. Today he joins a long line of self-exiles from Trump world who could no longer stomach all the corruption and deceit. People like Cassidy Hutchinson, people like Michael Cohen, Sarah Matthews, Alyssa Griffin, General James Mattis, Mattis, the Chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Mark Milley, General John Kelly, and now Vice President Mike Pence, who refuses to endorse for president the man he served with. But we do have loyal sycophants still in the room, and one day I look forward to hearing their testimony about how they got sunk into this religious cult. Mr. Parnas wrote Chairman Comer and me a remarkable letter on July 23rd, 2023. This is the first time I'm meeting him today. He was Rudy Giuliani's right-hand man, his globetrotting business partner and language interpreter in the mission to manufacture Ukraine and Burisma-related dirt and smears against Joe Biden in 2018 and 2019. He spent all of his time traveling around the world trying to stage uh, evidence against Joe Biden. In his letter, Parnas explains that the desperate search to find evidence of any kind of Biden corruption was a complete and total bust because there was no evidence to find. He wrote to tell us that not only is there no evidence in Ukraine that Joe Biden did anything improper, but more darkly, the manic search for a smoking gun against Biden became a mission to invent and concoct evidence out of thin air with the active help of Russian intelligence assets and agents. A man, you know, I'm getting to Russia, you haven't heard anything yet, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a man who has reckoned with his own moral descent into Trump world, Lev Parnas is ashamed of what he did to serve the interests of Russian propaganda and Putin's lies. And he wants America to know the truth. He can explain how the Russian stimulated conspiracy theories and lies that he promoted with Rudy Giuliani live on in the tiresome fabrication spread by Alex Smirnoff and now repeated by this committee like Pavlov's dog. At every turn, my colleagues cry Russia hoax even in the face of repeated warnings from Donald Trump's own Treasury Secretary and Secretary of State, from the intelligence community, from Robert Mueller, and most recently from Special Counsel Weiss, who was named to office by Donald Trump. As Secretary Mnuchin stated, quote, Russian disinformation campaigns targeting American citizens are a threat to our democracy. That's Secretary Mnuchin, someone that you guys usually defend, but my GOP colleagues continue to cry Russia hoax like cult members selling flowers at the airport. Our colleagues are the ones loyally amplifying the actual Russian hoax. Not the Russia hoax, the Russian hoax. The one that Giuliani and Trump and Smirnoff have eagerly, eagerly adopted from Putin and his agents. They participate in this hoax while they shamefully block $60 billion in military assistance to President Zelensky and the besieged Ukrainian people, five years after Trump and Giuliani tried to shake President Zelensky down for counterfeit dirt 
on Joe Biden. And while they continue to parrot these transparent Russian lies, Vladimir Putin wages his bloody aggressive war on Ukraine filled with atrocities like the mass kidnapping of children and the rape and slaughter of civilians. The MAGA rights wholesale adoption of this Russian hoax and their sellout of the Ukrainian people by the MAGA right is an historic betrayal of democracy, freedom, and the rule of law. But the defense of democracy begins with fidelity to the truth and the oversight Democrats, America's truth squad, against...